Hey everyone, my name is Naveed, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to create a Rails application. So in the previous video, we installed Ruby on Rails on our computer. Now we are ready to start creating Rails applications. To do that, let's go ahead and open up our terminal. And from here, we can run a simple command to create our Rails applications. But first, what I want to do is just make sure that my command line is pointed where I want it to be. So I can type in PWD to see that my command line is just pointing at the root directory, which is this user directory right here. Now I can type in ls to see all of the other directories that are in the root and notice that my desktop is there. So I can go ahead from this point, I can change my directory to point at the desktop. And now if I type in PWD, notice that I'm getting the desktop to the command line and it says right here that I'm also pointed at the desktop. So now when I create my Rails application, it's going to pop up right here on the right hand side on my desktop. Okay, so let's create the new Rails app. To do that, I'm going to type in Rails new and then provide the name of my application. So for this example, I'm just going to call it demo app because I'm just doing this demo for you. But you can really call your application anything you'd like. You can give it the name of your company, your idea, your business. It really doesn't matter. So just give a unique name. And then there are a few flags that we want to provide. So let me make this a little bigger so that you can see exactly what I'm typing. The first thing that we want to flag is the JavaScript. And just like this, we are going to specify that we're going to use ES build. And then with, with uh, CSS, we want to specify that we are using bootstrap like this. And then the last flag that we want is our database flag. We just type PostgreSQL like that. So it may be a little bit difficult to see, but this is the command that we are going to write to create our Rails application so that it will, it will come out of the box with ES build and bootstrap already configured, and then it will already have Postgres as our backend service as well. So this is the command you'll run. Let's go ahead and press enter and see what happens. This demo app directory gets created on the desktop and we can open it up and see everything in there, right? And this is really our Rails application. We can go back to the command line as that's running. Let's go to the top and really just see what happened. We get this directory created on the desktop and from the command line, all of these creates here are just creating the files and folders that make up the Rails application. Okay, once that completes, a bundle install is gonna be executed and that is going to install all of the Ruby gems that come default in our application. All of these lines you see here are just the responses that we're getting back as we install those gems. And when we scroll down, as the bundle install completes, uh, you're going to see the rest of the application, basically all of the JavaScripts, the assets, and basically Yarn setting up ES build. The important thing is that, you know, when you were installing, doing the installation, we had to set up Yarn. And that's a pretty critical step. So if you try to go through this and you skipped installing Yarn, your terminal shell or your, your shell is probably going to crash. So we can scroll down and see that, um, you know, Turbo.js has been set up and really all the pieces that we need for Rails 7 to work. We've successfully created our application on the desktop and we can go ahead now and just clear the command line. Now, if we type ls into the command line, we'll see that our demo app is there. So what we want to do is change our directory to point at the demo app. So we're gonna type in cd demo app. And now if I type in ls, we can see all of the contents inside of our demo app. So this really is our Rails application. And you know, with the command line pointed at the Rails application, I can now, I can go ahead and run my application locally. So in order to run my Rails application, what I want to do is go to the command line while I'm pointing at my Rails app and I can just run Rails server. Now let's go over to a web browser and open up a new window. And what we wanna do is go to port 3000. 
Now, if I go to localhost 3000, I'm going to get an error because we actually haven't set up our database yet locally on our computer. So we need to go back to the command line and to kill this, the Puma server, we can type in control C and that takes me back to the command line. Let's run clear. And this time before running the Puma server, I want to run rails db colon setup. And this is going to create the Postgres databases on my local instance. So let's run that. And now we see that these two databases were created on my computer and this Rails application by default, it's going to be pointing at this development database, right? That's the main issue here is that it's looking for a database called demo app development, but cannot find it. Now, if we run Rails server again, we are going to refresh and we should be, everything should work. Okay. So that's really the first piece you need to take away. Um, we're going to be interacting a lot with the command line and we're going to be, you know, kicking off a local environment to test our Rails application at port 3000.